Hello, everybody. We are very uh, honored today to be joined by Dennis Wayne. Uh, Dennis is the creator of uh, a web-based system that I'll let him explain here in a second called ModelSend. Uh, so let's just start right there. We're going to have a casual conversation. Uh, I'm very inspired by the work that, that, that Dennis has done, so I want to hear all about it. But let's start with the product itself. Uh, Dennis, can you tell us a little bit about what you've created? Yeah, for sure. Um, thanks for having me, Michael. Be uh, yeah, in simplest terms, model send is just a super easy way for any 3D modeler to get feedback on their 3D models. Um, so in a sense, uh, it's just, you know, a 3D model deserves 3D model, a 3D feedback. And instead of getting a screenshot of your 3D model and then annotating on that, um, we believe it's a lot, you know, simpler and provides more utility if you can view your 3D model um, in a browser and you can, you know, uh, interact it in a 3D way and place feedback directly on the model. That's awesome. So the, the reason why I, I really wanted to talk to you was we, we had a brief conversation before this about your journey into finding this application. So are you a, are you a 3D artist? Like what is, tell me about your background. Yeah, you know, I, I dabble. I, I created a donut in Blender. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, I primarily, you know, model in Blender. Um, that's where I sort of got started mm -hmm. where, you know, I was kind of introduced with it watching, um, you know, Blender Girls videos on YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, but we, you know, I primarily interacted with a lot of 3D modelers. Um, and that's how I sort of, uh, you know, was inspired and, you know, got really, you know, dived into this. And Yeah. So when you um, said you interacted with 3D modelers, was that just like friends of yours? Was it like people professionally that you worked with or how did that go? Yeah. In, you know, in a professional setting, we, you know, last year we were working on, a, you know, a metaverse kind of experience platform. Is it? where, you know, users in VR could um, host events and settings um, in, you know, the virtual reality. And that's how we sort of, you know, when we were making these, you know, virtual worlds, uh, we were actually working with a lot of different 3D modelers um, and sort of this like back and forth conversation with them, um, you know, through the whole process of making these huge scenes, um, and, you know, the back and forth and, um, you know, all the little small changes. That's sort of how we came up with the idea of model sound. Yeah. That's great. Oh, so talk to me like, so, okay. So you, because I'm fascinated with this journey of, of like idea to actual full product, right? Cause you're saying it like mm -hmm. we had this idea for a thing and then we just made it like there's a yeah. lot of steps between there, like here and there, but I'm sure a lot of people watching, listening to this have questions. So can you talk to me about like, um, how you basically the, the journey from like, where, where were you as a human being? when you came up with this idea and, and, um, and bringing it to, to life. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I think that was a pretty big journey. Um, I think it all, so I, you know, I came from a totally different background than, you know, um, development, you know, software engineer. I actually studied economics and history in college. Um, you know, I was, I worked on wall street. I was an investment bank and for a bit, um, and sort of like, I, so I graduated in 2019 um, and I worked there for, you know, close to three years. Really? Um, I guess with coronavirus and everything, when I, you know, sort of was home alone all the time, uh, I started, you know, dabbling in, you know, JavaScript, stuff like that, coding a little bit. And I thought, you know, I searched a lot online for YouTube and I, you know, was really interested in a lot of the open source software. Um, you know, I stumbled upon, you know, uh, called 3GS, which is, uh, it's like an open source, uh, JavaScript, uh, 3D sort of library that you can use to make web 3D uh, applications. And sort of that coincided with the, you know, the rise of the metaverse, um, sort of that kind of hype hey. and, you know, that's what sort of a lot of the open source stuff is a lot of, you know, what sort of. Uh, drove me and it was a lot of available information online too and that's how I sort of learned by myself um, to start these things. That's amazing. Most, most people are baking bread and trying to maintain sanity and you're losing learning jobs here today. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> no, it's, 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 it's really cool and like that was that was the, the part of the journey that, that uh, impressed me, inspired me the most was just this idea of recognizing an opportunity, like looking forward at the, the, the possible potentials down the road um, and, then, and then creating this tool 
uh, based on. So like ultimately in your mind, what's like the best use case uh, for models? You know, I think it's, you know, I, I kind of envision it where like, it's something everyone can use. Hopefully I'm not sure if everyone thinks that way, but you know, we sort of designed it in a way where it was sort of like dead simple to use, you know, it's like kind of like an everyday kind of thing. You know, I, you know, I make a model, I just drop it in and I send someone a private link and then they can, you know, easily view it. And it's what I found a lot of the times is when, when at least I was working with uh, 3d modelers, I wasn't sort of that knowledgeable of a lot of the different 3d softwares. I know there's a lot of different ones. Um, I, I only need blender at the time and it was <laughs> still pretty complicated. <laughs> Almost more complicated than, you know, be doing software engineering stuff Yeah, <laughs> a lot of the time. So, you know, so we kind of created it in a way where you wouldn't necessarily have to have like knowledge of like Blender or Maya or any of these 3D softwares. You could just, um, you know, view it in a browser and it'd be that easy and you could just comment on it. Um, yeah. And I think that was relevant, you know, at least in my sense, it was relevant. And, you know, for some people we talked with as well, it was pretty relevant yeah no i think i think that's i mean like i think your superpower is coming from this outside world and not like because if you if you would have started college and 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 everything and like just kind of been immersed in this 3d world like thinking about uh 3d models in a way that like you know like forget forget like blender or vibe but just like in it um you don't you wouldn't think about it being like hey matt like art directors directors uh, clients, people need to approve models from their iPads, from like very simple things. They don't, they frankly don't care about file formats. Like they just want to see it, mm -hmm. make comments on it, prove it. Um, and it, it really kind of shows like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to go back and I, I'm not doing this live, but I'm going to go back and edit in your, uh, your, like little screenshots and stuff of your software and of your, mm -hmm. of your website. And it is, it's very clean. It's very simple. It's literally just like upload model here get link, send link. That's pretty much it. And then like comment, right? So uh, yeah. So did you do all the UI on the uh, the design of the website itself? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Amazing. Um, well, that's really cool. So like, where do you see it now? So what, what phase are you in right now? Like what's top of mind for you? Uh, top of mind. So I think one of my biggest, like, you know, I guess weaknesses is in a sense, it's kind of like the sales aspect of it. So top of mind, obviously is like, getting more people to use it and, you know, really getting the word out about, you know, what it can do. And I think that's sort of like one of the hardest parts that I've had to deal with. Um, it's just like, you know, finding people, messaging people and really being very proactive. In right. a sense that, uh, you know, I'm kind of like, I just like, you know, sit in my room all day and kind of like make something <laughs> that's cool. really nice, but <laughs> yeah, you know, I have to, I have to sort of get out of my little show and, you know, it's hard Talk right more now. about it like i i agree yeah. it's really it's really hard to get a message out um out of the world that 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 really uh resonates and kind of feel like you know we're all being inundated constantly on every app that we go on like mm -hmm. my favorite is yeah. like just like oh, i see a news article and i click the link and there's just like ads like and i can't get to the actual article like the article's like that video. yeah you know i don't, I don't want to be so i don't want to be like very you know you know yeah kind of like invasive i don't i I really made sort of like to provide some kind of utility, but like, I feel it's very hard to come off as instead of just being like, oh, hey, use yeah. this. Because I'm, yeah. No, but I think, I think, I think this idea of like directing it towards, um, very simple use cases, very straightforward, mm -hmm. uh, um, like, cause I think one of the things that, that I'm seeing in my world is an explosion of 3d potential, like not, not in an entertainment sense of the word, not in like. You know, there's, there's a lot of different companies that are using 3D for, um, you know, like you talked about like VR experiences, AR experiences, internal design mm -hmm. reviews, um, you know, things, cause I've always, as an artist on animated films, like I was always so focused on the end product, right? Like, what does it look like on the screen for the audience at the end? And for a lot of people, like designing in 3D means internal reviews, like the, like the client will mm -hmm. never actually see the product, right? It'll be like an yeah. ad modeler will be, you know, designing or industrial designer or an automotive designer or footwear designer will be designing something They just need feedback from somebody on it. Right. So it doesn't, it just, so they just need to upload the model and go, um, that's really cool. So, so are you, are you, it sounds like you're a one man show. Like, is it just, just you 
Um, it's it's just me and one of my one of my college friends. It's amazing. So if you, um, I splashed coffee in my glasses. Um, if you, uh, if you have like advi- like what advice? Because my guess is that it's just such a like I always hear these like founder journeys right between, <laughs> um, you know, hey, I was working at a subway and I had this idea for blah blah blah, and they just and now I'm the you know now I created this thing that everyone uses every day. Um, yeah. What advice would you? Would because you, you talked about it so cash. What advice would you give mm-hmm. to somebody who's trying to maybe they're working in finance right now and have an idea for something else? Like what? What would you be? What would your? <laughs> That's pretty tough, actually. <laughs> it sounds really nice. You know, it sounds really nice in the beginning in your mind. We're like, oh hey, I'm gonna make this app and everyone's gonna use it. But I think it's a lot harder than that. <laughs> yeah. But um, what was the hardest? I like, think what was the hardest part? For you? Like, because I think. Because it it they could they could not be more different, right? Because the finance job uh-huh. feels very um, correct me if I'm wrong, but they feel very uh, uh, regulated, very structured, very much like this is your job, this is what you're going to do, this is what we need you to focus on. Uh-huh. Where this uh-huh. is like the world of possibilities, but also sure. like less financial security, less uh-huh. less certainty overall. Um, yeah. How did? Oh, how, for like, sure, for sure. What What about that transition was like the hardest? For you know, I think the hardest part is um, you definitely have to deal with failure very well. And I think I, you know, I grew up in a setting where like it was, you know, fine to fail. I know it's okay. And you just move on <laughs> hopefully, and learn something from it, hopefully. But, um, you know, a lot of the things you do might not work, I think. You know, you might like come up with a plan and everything in your head sounds perfect. But when you, you know, do it and then, you you know, it doesn't work out. You, you need to be able to just be like, okay, you know, that was fine. You know, I knew there was going to be a chance it doesn't work. I obviously hope it works, but if it doesn't, it's okay. I, you know, I'll move on and try something else. So I think that's probably the most important thing, to be honest, like, cause it's probably not going to work the first time or, you know, second or third. So that's incredible. So how did, but how do you, do you, cause you have, it sounds like you have a business partner. Um, yeah. How do you, is it just like a gut feeling? How do you determine if something has failed? It's just not feel right or does somebody tell you like it's not working to you like because that i think i think that's something that people uh-huh. like because there's there's this culture especially in the u.s of uh-huh. like i failed you know thomas edison failed at making the light bulb maybe 300 times or whatever the number crazy numbers until he got the right light bulb. and i'm like at time yeah. seven like i had given up i've been like light bulb <laughs> handles are fine we're good uh like yeah. how, do you, how do you know when to push through versus how do you know when to fail yeah, that, yeah, that's true. Yeah, fail fast is always what everyone says. And but yeah, it's. I think it's. You definitely at a certain point you have to trust your gut and obviously, you know, listen to the users. If you're not getting traction, it's just there's probably no demand for it. I think at the end of the day, it's all all about obviously how many people use it, how many people think it's providing some kind of utility. And if you know you're, if you're spending all this time reaching out to people or you're spending a lot of money on like advertising and stuff, and you know you're just not getting any traction i think then at the end of the day you know it you know maybe there wasn't sort of this you know utility provided by the product that's great that's great yeah. awesome all right cool well are there any like lasting messages any like let's say um <laughs> i'm listening to this and i want to test out model seven mm-hmm. what should i do yeah i mean again we've made it super simple you just upload your model and you can get your link and send it to someone i think at you know hopefully we're providing some kind of utility to people and i you know regardless of what kind of industry they do i you know whether it be just retail or gaming or um, architecture i think hopefully it'll provide some utility that's great thank you so much i'll I'll keep this nice and simple of we'll do keep this to about 15 minutes um because like i said Mm -hmm. simple product you're an inspirational journey guys check uh if if people want to follow you like the individual because i'm I was, I was, I like, I think your product is cool, but I got, I had so much fun talking to you when we talked the other day. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have any, do you have any like social media things you want to hype up right now? I didn't talk to you about this ahead of time, but is there any, if people want to follow you, how would they follow you? Uh, they can just follow the models at a Twitter <laughs> account. <laughs> models at HQ on Twitter. Perfect. Dennis, thank you so much. Uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you. I love the advice about, um, not having a fear of failure and being, and like giving yourself some room to fail. And, uh, thank you so much yeah. for joining, and and I appreciate your appreciate you taking the time and ranking. It's a really cool thing. Thank you, Michael. All right, be good, y'all.